Hello fabricators, I'm John Schuler with Park Industries. With me today I have Brian Lindblom. Brian is going to give us a tour around one of our machines. Brian, what are we looking at today? Today, John, we have the Crosscut Deluxe. Um, this is a dedicated miter saw. It does one thing and one thing only, which is clean, accurate miter cuts. First thing I notice about this machine, Brian, is a small footprint. Um, what are the dimensions of this machine? Uh, so the length of the machine is about 15 and a half feet long, and it's about three and a half feet wide. We also recommend a three foot safety distance around the machine. And then also this side table will stick out an additional four feet if you have it installed. What size parts can we throw on here? Uh, so we can run up to 11 foot long countertop on here. Oh, all right. So you wanna show me a little bit of the components on this machine? Sure. So with the machine, um, I, as I mentioned earlier, there's a side table that we can ship with the machine. This comes with it, four foot long extension. You can buy additional ones if you desire, and they will go in any one of these five bays. There's also a small parts table that will ship with the machine. And if you need additional, you can purchase these as well, but this can lift up and go in any one of these bays as well for small parts if we need additional support. Also the clamping fixture, this is the hold down that holds your part down. This runs all four of these pneumatic hold down clamps. Just a single lever will pull these all down and back up, just flip the lever the other way. You'll also notice on these hold downs, these are adjustable feet that I can slide back and forth and position any place in here and simply twist it tight to lock it. Another feature of this Crosscut Deluxe is we have an automatic travel stop that we can position anywhere along this rail so we can have the, the cross travel, the machine will stop wherever this is once it hits this stop. If you come around the back side of the machine, I'll show you a few of the components back here. So you notice we have a bellow cover that's going to cover the whole linear rail for the cross travel of the saw. Uh, we have a proven gear rack and pinion drive design down here. And if we come down here, you'll notice we have a seven and a half horsepower VFD controlled arbor so I can control the RPMs on this saw. We have ample water cooling with these lock lines and fans to get adequate water supply to our blade for cooling. And some of the maintenance on here is real simple too because we have a, an oiler on the side of the machine and this is all piped to the bearings so I simply just press the lever down and release it and that's going to lubricate all my bearings on the machine. All right Brian, so what size blade can we run in this thing? So the machine's going to ship with a 14 inch diameter blade. Uh, like I said, it mounts real easy on this VFD. Uh, simple shield to pull loose and then pull your arbor nut loose to change blades and put it back on. Brian, why is a, why is a VFD important on this machine? Uh, VFD is very important for we, we can run different types of blades to cut different types of materials. Porcelain wanna, and porcelain, different materials Porcelain, Decton, like granite, quartz. We want to have that capability of adjusting the RPM to accommodate those materials. The operating station looks pretty easy. You want to show me how to run this thing? Sure, it's real easy to run. Um, all we're going to do is turn our power switch to on and that's going to turn on our two displays here. So our top display here, this is going to control our VFD arbor and it's easy to adjust with our arrow down or arrow up. Gives us our display and RPMs here. And this second display down here is for my travel speed for how fast I cut. And these have different values that we can control also and we can make fine tune adjustments to go up or down in these values too for different feed rates. All right, Brian, that didn't look too bad. Um, should we throw some parts up here and make some miters? Yeah, let's make some cuts. So today, John, we're just gonna cut some 2CM quartz on here. Uh, we got one countertop and two aprons that we'll put together. And you want polished side down? Yep, we're gonna do polished side down for these. So another nice thing that we can do on this saw is I can cut multiple parts at once. There's just a stop here that you butt them up against, right? Now yep. they're square. 
Exactly. Okay. What, uh, what angle are we going to cut for the miter? What can we do with this machine, I should ask? So the machine is capable. We can go from a 43 up to a 47 degree angle. Okay. So we cut just past 45 for an outside miter like this. For your inside corners, you just do polish side up, I suppose. Yes. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll clamp this down. This right here? Yep. Okay. So I said we, we talked about how easy this is to run, and I kind of changed my mind. I was going to run through this demo, but I think I'd rather just have you try it and see if you oh, remember wow. kind of what I talked about. I'll be here for help if you need any help. I'll give it a shot. So we're simply just going to turn the arbor on by pressing the forward button. Okay. Then I'm going to turn the water on for you. So we have water. We want to make sure we have the water turned on. And I got the speed set already. All we're going to do is turn the dial to the X plus and the machine's just going to start cutting. That's it, huh? That's it. Ryan, how fast are we going? Uh, for this one, we're cutting just over 40 inches a minute. So once our saw gets through here, we're going to stop the machine and we're going to pull our parts out and then we're just going to turn them 90 degrees so we can miter the other side. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and turn that water valve off for me. So we're going to pull our pieces away and then we can get the saw to move back and then we're going to turn our pieces 90 degrees and then make the other two cuts. So right there is good. Another nice feature on the saw is we have a rapid return so it comes back pretty quick. So once our saw is back at home, we can raise our clamps back up and then we're going to position our parts in here. Slide this clamp over a little bit. I'm just going to slide this one over just a little here. Bring this one down. And I think we're ready to go. Right. So why don't you go ahead and drop the clamp for me again. I'll turn the water on and we're going to do the same thing we did before. So we'll start the arbor up and then just hit the X plus.
That's it, John. It's that easy. All right. We'll just go ahead and stop it. And we can shut our control off up here. Well, let's take a look at those edges. Let's raise our clamps up and we can hose it down a little bit and see what they look like. Yeah, so as you can see, we got nice, crisp, clean miter edges on here. And if you even look at the top side here, we got just a nice edge on there. How fast were we going? Um, we we're going over 40 inches. We we're probably pretty close to about 52 inches a minute. Well, let's put these pieces together and see how they fit. Yeah, let's do it. If you want to give me a hand, we can put it right on our side table here. Let's just carefully butt these up here. Just be ready to tape up and uh, glue together. Looks pretty good. Yeah, we even got a nice little grain mash going on here. Impressive, Brian. Yeah. So this was the 2CM course that we had cut through here. Um, we're running this at about 52, 53 inches a minute uh, with our granite and quartz blade. We also had another, uh, another piece that I ran through earlier with the porcelain blade that I put on here. That's why that VFD is important, so I can okay. control the RPM on that blade. So this part, wow. I had uh, some 2CM, or uh, sorry, two inch drop aprons on this. This is a 12 millimeter stone, so it's about a half inch thick. So with the right setup, we still get our nice crisp crisp edges on these miters. We fold these together. Nice tight edges, ready for gluing and fabricating. That's pretty good for porcelain. Especially since this material is getting more and more popular and a yep. lot of this stuff gets mitered anyway because it's so thin. No chipping? Good. Alright Brian, thanks for showing us the cross cut today. The machine is very easy to use, obviously. The results are amazing, sharp, nice miters, um, so I appreciate it. Thank you, it's my pleasure. So I learned a lot today, um, I hope you learned a lot today, so thanks for joining us.